our first guests are our golf guys, Paul Azinger and Dan Hicks, who uh, will join me now. And we can discuss where we all were, guys, four weeks ago on Friday when professionals were handling cameras, microphones, audio equipment, and everything else. We were all at the Players' Championship, and then everything has changed. It's been an incredible four weeks since. Uh, Dan, I'll start with you, just how this whole thing has uh, turned around so quick and so fast. Uh, your reaction to the way this month has gone for us. The Zing, my man over there, uh, right next door. Uh, I, I think it's one of those deals at the Players' Championship. We sat, I remember specifically being at dinner Wednesday night with a lot of our Golf Channel NBC colleagues and thinking, I was thinking to myself, there's just no way that this tournament is going to finish. And that was Wednesday, and they had just announced that the next day, on the second round on Friday, there was going to be no crowds. And even then, I thought, I don't see how it can finish. And in the end, they played the first round, and that was bizarre to get on a plane and come home on Friday. But it was at that point where you didn't know where this was going to go, and I don't think if any of us could have anticipated where it's gone now. I, I wake up every day and think, is this really happening? Yet it is. It's real, and mm -hmm. it's uh, there's some really tough stuff going around the world. So sports is on the back burner. We can sit here and talk about it, but uh, I, I cannot wait to get it back and, and resume some sense of normalcy. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I think. And Paul, we all <clears> would be at Augusta. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I mean, we all are, uh, I think, dying to get back to work, but uh, certainly this COVID virus has put golf and sports in perspective, but uh, maybe it's a race for sports, uh, all these sports leagues, to see who can be the first one back. That might be a race you don't want to win, though. Um, but uh, we'll see what happens. I think that the powers to be in the game of golf are very, very optimistic and just showing us all uh, that they're visionaries too, Mike, with all these preset dates just in case we can get back out the door. Paul, uh, Justin Thomas was on the show a few days back, and we discussed – that reality of what that calendar might look like for golf. And Justin, I thought, brought up an interesting point. Those who can practice, who have still access to golf facilities, th there's no reason in his mind to go grind right now because who knows what that run is going to be like. If you were a current player, a top player in the world right now, how would you try to handle these uh, couple of months of knowing you're not going to play for anything big, at least for a little while? It's... Uh kind of like a rain delay and in, in, uh, when you have the lead, <clears throat> you know, you, sometimes, uh, you know, you got to just keep your mind ready to get started back in, in the game. And um, you got to be ready for the playoff after, or uh, whatever it may be um, if you have to wait around and these guys have to wait around. So I think they have to stay mentally involved. I believe they have to stay physically fit, which they will. And, um, I'd play as much golf as I could for fun. I wouldn't be grinding and working on it. I'd shoot as many low scores as I could and just have fun with my buddies, try to social distance. And, uh, but what a great break if you live in an area where you can hang out. You know, there's, there's a lot of people in these big cities. When they walk out their front door, they're in a hallway. And uh, I pity those people. I feel for them. And uh, we're just happy and blessed to be able to, play, you know, to be able to be outside if, you're, if you can play golf at all. And Dan, one of the challenges in golf of getting this restarted is it is such a global game. It's everybody, coaches, players, caddies. When the tour shows up, it is truly a circus coming together from 50 different places, and everyone disperses so quickly. That's, I think, going to be one of the challenges of how we get this restarted at some point in golf. Yeah, I think I've heard a lot of talk, Mike, about how, well, maybe golf is one of the better sports to be able to start up uh, the quickest because it is outdoors and it is spread out. But you just talked about the global game it's become. And when you talk about this compacted schedule that is coming up, and it's exciting to think about all of these major championships, the FedEx Cup playoffs, the Ryder Cup. I mean, the U.S. Open at Wingfoot is scheduled the week before the Ryder Cup. Can you imagine all of these guys trying to get as hot as they possibly can to play as high a caliber of golf they can? They could really have a great fall. But again, I think the challenges are exactly what you talked about, getting all of these people from around the world into these sites. And, you know, I'm not I've heard a lot of talk about playing all these sports without fans. I'm, I'm just I'm not a fan of that. I think sports depends on fans. And I think that you're also risking the people in the infrastructure that is there at all these big events. Mm -hmm. What about all those people serving food and everything? So I hope it gets back as soon as possible. But. 
I think it's going to be a real step by step, day by day process to see, um, you know, when these sports come back. I'm going to kick back for a minute, Dan. You've got your 18th Tower partner there, Paul. So I'd love to hear you ask Paul a question. Listen to you guys just chat for a few minutes. Yep. Okay. Um, Zing, what about the compacted schedule? I think it's intriguing. I think also it, it produces a lot of challenges for a lot of players to be ready. Take Tiger, for instance. If Tiger is feeling physically fine during this stretch, this guy could have quite a run, and that goes for everybody else too, wouldn't you think? Absolutely, and uh, there's a lot on the line for those guys as well. I mean, there's a good look at what the schedule is going to be. What a shame the Open Championship has uh, been forced to be canceled. But this is just another reason for these guys to stay uh, in touch and connected to the game uh, physically and mentally. Uh, start visualizing some of those courses you might get to play. But it just shows, you know, if somebody gets red hot in a schedule that's uh, that tight. Somebody like Tiger back in the Tiger era could have run the tables on these events, and uh, maybe somebody can snap off a couple majors. It's a great opportunity uh, when things get dialed back up. It's a real optimistic look at our future, and I just leave it up to the visionaries in golf and TV to try to lock down these dates to give us all something to look forward to. But as a player, I would be ready to rock and roll um, and hope that I can peak right about then. That's our goal always. You know, so these guys that hesitate to go out and practice, they don't want to be peaking right now when there's nothing to play in. Uh, you want to pace yourself. If somebody peaks and gets red hot, somebody like McElroy's got to be looking at this as a great opportunity for him to pad his stats and, and uh, his march into history. And also, a great Zing, point. Uh, Dan, you know yeah. Wingfoot. So yeah, go ahead, but you you keep going. No, go no, no. Go ahead. You go ahead. You got you got a wing foot question. I'm all in. What do you got? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I figured that. I was going to say when you saw the calendar and saw September, you have played wing foot a lot in September that time of year. We know what U.S. Open setups are like and how fast they are. Can wing foot be in that kind of shape in September, knowing the agronomy of it all? Absolutely. It is a great time to play golf in the Northeast and uh, the Wingfoot. I got to give a shout out to Steve Rabideau, who's been uh, the golf course superintendent at Wingfoot after they had the last one in 2006. The guy is a genius. And the fall is sometimes the best time. I must say sometimes all the time, at least for the members to get out there and play. The golf course is in absolutely sensational shape. And so the greens will be fast hard firm the rough might even be lusher with the fall weather which uh makes the grass grow a little bit better mm -hmm. at that time of year so as far as the u.s open a wing foot in september uh it, it could be absolutely perfect as long as uh the weather cooperates and there's not a lot of rain but i think it's uh, an ideal time to play a u.s open at wing foot and paul fingers crossed this calendar holds up what do you think augusta will be like in november same thing, except it'll be more brown, I imagine. Uh, overseed <clears throat> should be uh, okay, I hope. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to overseed it in time to get it to grow. Uh, it could be a completely different Augusta National than we're used to seeing. We certainly won't see the flowers. Uh, maybe the leaves are going to start falling off the trees early there at Augusta. Uh, I don't know, but as far as getting it uh, firm and dry and fast and ready and, and as they'd like, I'm sure if anybody could do it, it'd be there at Augusta National. And, Dan, you're right about Wingfoot. I mean, with all those rains of summertime come pouring in, and that, rough, that rough at Wingfoot would be, uh, it'd be just about as thick as it could get. Well, as both of you know, uh, because you both love the game so much, you're always trying to find that next best way to prepare yourself. So I thought this was an interesting one on social media of maybe how to envision a putt, envision the line of a putt, and how you can maybe set up a little bit of a visual guideline. Paul, any thought on what Matt Killen's doing here with 100 tequila bottles? <laughs> I hope he hasn't already gone through them. I hope they're not empty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, if, he wants to win a, if he wants to win a contest, he needs to squeeze those closer together, and then he could win a contest because that, that's a pretty amazing putt. It went right down the shadow's edge. It was awesome. How many takes, how many takes did, that, did that take? You yeah. wonder, and you wonder how much tequila he went through to actually be relaxed <laughs> enough to make that stroke. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to get to the point to come up with that idea to do that was, hey, uh, was pretty funny. And by the way, something Mike, else right? on social media 
Exactly, including you. You and Rowdy Gaines called a uh, swimming race, which you guys would be doing this summer <laughs> at the Olympics, uh, called it for someone online, which is absolutely hysterical, too. So we're just trying to find ways. And, Danny, that's the other thing I'll wrap up with, that uh, it's pushed back for a while. But I know after the golf season and this run that we would have had on NBC and Golf Channel, you were still getting ready to be with Rowdy again for one more run in the uh, U.S. Olympic trials and then the swimming in Tokyo, which hopefully is pushed back a year. But I know what a special time of the year that is for you. It's um, it's it's the best. And, you know, Mike, now involved with the Olympics, uh, it, it just doesn't get any better as far as, uh, you know, the anticipation of it. I, I couldn't wait to get to the trials, the swimming trials in Omaha to be with Rowdy and Tommy Roy, our producer, who happens to do all of our golf. But he does he does our Olympic swimming as well. It's such a fun sport to do every four years. And you just kind of gather the crew and you build up a month ahead before the Olympics. So looking forward to the trials and in the anticipation that you get by, by, you know, as another Olympics approaches. And now that it's, um, it's going to be delayed a year, you're going to have to just kind of relive that anticipation process, but we'll do it again. And um, it's, it's going to be, I think it could be depending on what happens, one of the most inspirational Olympics that, uh, that we've ever been involved in. Yeah. A lot of us are feeling that and hoping that Zinger stay well down there in Florida. Dan, you're the best, by the way. Nice job by Hannah Storm, Dan's wife, for getting the proper seating for Dan so the right. shot looked good. The shot looked awful before we came on the air. Hannah took care of it. Good job, yep. Hannah. Well done. Yep, that'll be more Thanks, dishes guys. for me in the offing, Mike. Great to be with you, pal. Thanks a lot. Zane, good to see you. <laughs> see you guys. Yeah.